We've talked previously about the four vector constructed using energy and the ordinary three-dimensional vector momentum. Just like other four vectors we're familiar with of space and time, there's an invariant length associated with this four vector. We have a four vector here because we have an energy scalar and a three-dimensional vector momentum. We've said before that four vectors, when subjected to a Lorentz transformation or a boost between two reference frames, act as if they're rotating in a four-dimensional space in such a way that they have an invariant length. That's a lot like when we have three-dimensional vectors that are rotated when uh, viewed in a different set of coordinate axes but don't change length. The, co the individual coordinates or components of the vector may change but the actual length of the vector does not. In the case of the Lorentz transformations, we may have px, py, pz, and energy all change, but the length of this four vector will not change. For a single particle, the four vector uh, length has a well-defined meaning. It's the mass squared of that particle, or mc squared squared. But we may also define this four vector for a system of particles. Let's imagine we're about to have a massive collision of several particles, and we can define the four vector for this system. There's a total energy, which is just a scalar sum. E tote is E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4 plus all the energies in the system. And there's a total momentum, a vector momentum, where we compute Px total is equal to Px1 plus the second particle of x px plus the third particle's px, and so on. And the same for py and pz. So we can again construct an invariant for this total four vector for the system. That invariant we'll call a script m times c to the fourth. And it's just going to equal e total squared minus p total c quantity squared. Notice that p is a vector now but when we square it, of course, we get a scalar. Now, is this interpretation of this new quantity m the total mass of all the particles in the system? Absolutely not. That's not its meaning at all. This new script m, this invariant for this four vector, has the interpretation of being the total energy of the system as seen in the center momentum frame. The center momentum frame is the particular frame that we, have, we get to when we are in a case when all the momentum actually add up to a vector sum of zero. Particle physicists sometimes poorly choose the term center of mass frame for this frame, but it's technically the center of momentum frame. In the center of momentum frame, since the total P is zero, then we can write that this invariant is the energy in the center of momentum frame minus the square of the momentum in the center of momentum frame. But since the second term is zero, I just get the total energy squared in the center of momentum frame. Now, why do we continue to call this invariant the invariant mass? Because that's the term it commonly goes by. Well, if I happen to imagine a particular reaction where two particles, x and y, slam together to make a third particle, z, then the z in the center of momentum frame will be at rest. And so the center of momentum energy is just the mass of this new particle. Not every reaction in the center momentum frame does this, but when the case where we imagine slamming two things together to make something new, then this m represents the largest mass of an object that you could create by bombarding your collection of particles together and fusing them into a single massive particle. In all cases, this script m, or, or uh, calligraphy m, has the interpretation of being the center momentum energy of a system but in some cases you can also think of it as a mass. It's the largest mass that you can create with your collection of particles.